we're talking about the new guidelines in malaria and the program for malaria that is national vector bone disease control program what are the new updates that have come now first of all what do you mean by a malaria suspect case any person who is having fever with chills without chills without any localizing signs and symptoms that means the person does not have cough or cold or burning micturition or a skin lesion or something only plain fever is there then all such people will be considered as the suspects of malaria. Now, once you are suspecting your patient to be a malaria case, what you should do is that you have to confirm it. Remember that the presumptive treatment of malaria is banned, which means just on the basis of the signs and symptoms, without a confirmatory lab diagnosis, you should not and you cannot give treatment for malaria. So you have to get this diagnosis of malaria confirmed using the lab test. Now, what are our options? You can go for the peripheral blood smear for malaria or you can also go for the new ones that is the rapid diagnostic test kits. Now both these tests will be able to detect both the important types of the parasite that is the vivax as well as the falciparum type of the malaria. Now this person could be either a case of vivax malaria or it could be a case of falciparum malaria or it could be a case of mixed malaria wherein the person has got both vivax and falciparum together. If it's a case of vivax malaria then our treatment of choice is going for chloroquine. It's a three day regime and you'll be giving a total of 25 milligrams per kg of chloroquine over a period of three days. So generally it is in a divided dose of 10 milligrams, 10 milligrams and 5 milligrams per kg per day. Now along with the chloroquine, in the case of the vivax, we will be also giving the radical treatment in the form of primaquine. Now this primaquine will have to be given for 14 days to achieve the radical treatment of malaria. But before you administer primaquine, you have to be aware of certain contraindications of the primaquine. What are those contraindications? Well, of course, it is contraindicated in infants because the safety is not assured. Pregnant ladies in all the three trimesters. It is also contraindicated in those individuals who are G6PD deficient. Now, suppose if someone is uh, not aware about the G6PD state, as in G6PD test is a genetic test which is not easily available in the peripheries. So, how do you go ahead with such patients? So, this is the case of Vivax. I want to give them Primer Queen, but I don't know what is their G6PD status, so how do I go ahead with it? What we do in such cases is we give hemoglobin, we go for the hemoglobin test. If the person is anemic, then we do not take the risk of giving Primer Queen. So in most of these patients, we will have to avoid giving Primer Queen till your, the anemia is cured. But if the person is not anemic at that point, then you can take the calculated risk of giving Primer Queen under supervision. But then the patient has to be told of the warning signs of hemolysis and this would be dark colored maturation representing hematuria or central cyanosis developing in the patient. So if these symptoms develop, they are supposed to immediately stop taking primaquine and report to a health center. Now coming to the falciparum treatment, as you know, the falciparum is showing a great amount of resistance to the chloroquine. So there is no point in giving chloroquine and increasing the resistance further. So in the case of the falciparum patients, we go for HCT, that is the artesunate combination treatment. Now the guidelines for the ACT are different in the northeastern states of India and the other states of the India. In the predominant other states of the India, the treatment guideline that we follow is a three-day regime of artesunate on day 1, 2 and 3. In addition, you will be giving a single dose of sulfadoxin and pyrimethamine. Now this is generally given on the day one of the treatment along with the artesunate. And the third drug would be a single dose of primaquine which you will give on day two. Now the primaquine which you are giving over here is not for the radical treatment of falciparum because you don't require it in falciparum. Here the primaquine is basically for its gametocidal action. So it is required for the primary treatment of this malarial episode. In the northeastern states, we give a combination of artemether and lumefantrine. And again, you have to give a single dose of primaquine to boost this treatment further. So in the majority of the states, the non-northeastern states will be giving artesunate, sulfadoxin, pyrimethamine and primaquine. In the northeastern states, you will be giving artemether, lumefantrine and primaquine. So we give this three drug combination for falciparum. Now, so far we talked about the treatment of vivax and the treatment of the falciparum in the non-pregnant individuals. But what if you require the treatment to be done in pregnancy? Now, if you have a pregnant woman who is suffering from vivax malaria, then remember that chloroquine is a very, very safe drug. So you can give it in any trimester of the pregnancy. 
And as far as the Prima Queen is concerned, of course, it is contraindicated for the radical treatment here. So when it comes to the treatment of the falciparum malaria in the third and the second trimester, pregnancy is there and she's suffering from, let's say, falciparum. So can I give her artesunate? Well, yes, artesunate can be given in the second and the third trimester. Can I give her sulfuroxane pyrimethamine? Yes, you can give that also. Can I give Prima Queen? Of course not. So in the second and third trimester pregnancy, you can give the two drugs that is artesunate and sulfuroxane pyrimethamine but primaquine will have to be avoided and you should not give this primaquine after pregnancy because this is not for radical treatment but if it is a first trimester pregnancy then can i give artesunate sulfuroxane pyrimethamine or primaquine well unfortunately no all these three drugs are contraindicated in the first trimester of pregnancy so what do we give to the pregnant women in the first trimester for the treatment of falciparum the drug of choice is Quinine. So we'll be giving quinine for the treatment of falciparum malaria in the first trimester in pregnancy. Now what about those people who are uh, having mixed malaria, which means they are having the falciparum also and they're having the vivax also. In such individuals, of course, you have to treat them as falciparum malaria. But since these people also have vivax, you have to give them additional 14 days of primaquine over and above the primaquine that you had given as part of the primary treatment. So we'll be giving a single dose of primaquine as treatment of the falciparum malaria plus we'll be giving 14 days of primaquine for the radical treatment of the vivax malaria. Now remember that the doses are different. What we're giving for the primary treatment of the falciparum is 0.75 milligrams per kg of primaquine and what we are giving for the radical treatment is 0.25 milligrams per kg of the primaquine over a course of 14 days. So that is the treatment that we follow in the mixed malaria cases. Suppose if it's a case of mixed malaria in the second or the third trimester of pregnancy, then you'll be giving only the treatment of falciparum in the form of artesunate and sulfadoxin pyrimethamine and the primaquine would be avoided. But of course, you will give radical treatment after pregnancy. If it is a first trimester mixed malaria case, then you'll be giving quinine as the drug for treating that episode of malaria. But then beyond pregnancy, you should give the radical treatment using 14 days of primaquine. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.